Act Five of the Tragedy of King Lear by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Five, Scene One: The Camp of the British Forces near Dover. Enter with drum and colours, Edmund, Regan, officers, soldiers, and others. Edmund to an officer who goes out know the duke if his last purpose hold or whether since he is advised by aught to change the course he is full of alteration and self-reproving bring his constant pleasure <sighs> our sister's man is certainly miscarried tis to be doubted madam now sweet lord you know the goodness i intend upon you tell me but truly but then speak the truth do you not love my sister in honoured love but have you never found my brother's way to the forfended place that thought abuses you i am doubtful that you have been conjunct and bosomed with her as far as we call hers no by mine honour madam i shall never endure her dear my lord be not familiar with her. Fear not. She and the Duke her husband. Enter with drum and colours, Albany, Goneril, and soldiers. Goneril aside. I had rather lose the battle than that sister should loosen him and me. A very loving sister well be met. Sir, this I heard. The king is come to his daughter with others whom the rigour of our state forced to cry out. Where I could not be honest, I never yet was valiant. For this business it touches us as France invades our land, not bolds the king, with others whom I fear most just and heavy causes make oppose. Sir, you speak nobly. Why is this reasoned? Command together against the enemy. For these domestic and particular broils are not the question here. Let's then determine with the ancient of war on our proceedings. I shall attend you presently at your tent. Sister, you'll go with us? No. That is most convenient. Pray you, go with us. Goneril aside. Ah, uh how? -huh. I know the riddle. I will go. Exeunt Edmund, Regan, Goneril, officers, soldiers, and attendants. As they are going out, enter Edgar disguised if ever your grace had speech with man so poor hear me one word i'll overtake you speak before you fight the battle ope this letter if you have victory let the trumpet sound for him that brought it wretched though i seem i can produce a champion that will prove what is avouched there if you miscarry your business of the world has so an end and machination ceases fortune love you stay till i have read the letter i was forbid it when time shall serve let but the herald cry and i'll appear again why fare thee well i will all look thy paper exit edgar enter edmund the enemy's in view draw up your powers here is the guess of their true strength and forces by diligent discovery but your haste is now urged on you we will greet the time exit to both these sisters have i sworn my love each jealous of the other as the stung are of the adder which of them should i take both one or neither neither can be enjoyed if both remain alive to take the widow exasperates makes mad her sister goneril and hardly shall i carry out my side her husband being alive now then will use his countenance for the battle which being done let her who would be rid of him devise his speedy taking off as for the mercy which he intends to leer unto cordelia the battle done and they within our power shall never see his pardon for my state stands on me to defend not to debate exit scene two a field between the two camps alarm within 
enter with drum and colours lear cordelia and their forces and exeunt enter edgar and gloucester here father take the shadow of this tree for your good host pray that the right may thrive if ever i return to you again i'll bring you comfort grace go with you sir exit edgar alarm and retreat within enter edgar away old man give me thy hand away king lear hath lost he and his daughter taken give me thy hand come on <sighs> no further sir a man may rot even here what in ill thoughts again men must endure their going hence even as they're coming hither ripeness is all come on and that's true too exeunt scene three the british camp near dover enter in conquest with drum and colours edmund lear and cordelia as prisoners officers soldiers etc some officers take them away good guard unto their greater pleasures first be known that are to censure them we are not the first who with best meaning have incurred the worst for thee oppressed king i am cast down myself could else out frown false fortune's frown shall we not see these daughters and these sisters no 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 come let's away to prison we two alone will sing like birds in the cage when thou dost ask me blessing i'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness so we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales and laugh at gilded butterflies and hear poor rogues talk of court news and we'll talk with them too who loses and who wins who's in who's out and take upon us the mystery of things as if we were god's spies and we will wear out in a walled prison packs and sects of great ones that ebb and flow by the moon take them away upon such sacrifices my cordelia the gods themselves throw incense have i caught thee he that parts us shall bring a brand from heaven and fire us hence like foxes wipe thine eyes the good years shall devour them flesh and fell ere they shall make us weep we'll see em starve first come exeunt lear and cordelia guarded come hither captain hark take thou this note giving a paper go follow them to prison one step i have advanced thee if thou dost as this instructs thee thou dost make thy way to noble fortunes know thou this that men are as the time is to be tender-minded does not become a sword thy great employment will not bear question either say thou do it or thrive by other means i'll do it my lord about it and try it happy when thou hast done mark i say instantly and carry it so as i have set it down i cannot draw a cart nor eat dried oats if it be man's work i'll do it exit flourish enter albany goneril regan officers and attendants sir you have showed to-day your valiant strain and fortune led you well you have the captives who were the opposites of this day's strife i do require them of you so to use them as we shall find their merits and our safety may equally determine sir i thought it fit to send the old and miserable king to some retention and appointed guard whose age has charms in it whose title more to pluck the common bosom on his side and turn our impressed lances in our eyes which do command them with him i sent the queen my reason all the same and they are ready to-morrow or at further space to appear where you shall hold your session at this time we sweat and bleed the friend hath lost his friend and the best quarrels in the heat are cursed by those that feel their sharpness the question of cordelia and her father requires a fitter place 
"'Sir, by your patience, I hold you but a subject of this war, not as a brother.' "'That's as we list to grace him. Methinks our pleasure might have been demanded, ere you had spoke so far. He led our powers, bore the commission of my place and person, the which immediacy may well send up and call itself your brother.' not so hot in his own grace he doth exalt himself more than in your addition in my rights by me invested he compares the best that were the most if he should husband you <laughs> jesters do oft prove prophets Halla, halla! that eye that told you so looked but a squint lady i am not well else i should answer from a full flowing stomach general take thou my soldiers prisoners patrimony dispose of them of me the walls are thine witness the world that i create thee here my lord and master mean you to enjoy him the let alone lies not in your good will not in thy lord half-blooded fellow yes regan to edmund let the drum strike and prove my title thine stay yet hear reason edmund i arrest thee on capital treason and in thy arrest this gilded serpent pointing to goneril for your claim fair sister i bar it in the interest of my wife tis she is subcontracted to this lord and i her husband contradict your bands if you will marry make your loves to me my lady is bespoke Ha! an interlude thou art armed gloucester let the trumpet sound if none appear to prove upon thy person thy heinous manifest and many treasons there is my pledge throwing down a glove i'll make it on thy heart ere i taste bread thou art in nothing less than i have here proclaimed thee sick oh sick goneril aside if not i'll ne'er trust medicine there's my exchange throwing down a glove what in the world he is that names me traitor villain like he lies call by thy trumpet he that dares approach on him on you who not i will maintain my truth and honour firmly a herald ho enter a herald trust to thy single virtue for thy soldiers all levied in my name have in my name took their discharge <laughs> my sickness grows upon me she is not well convey her to my tent exit regan led come here the herald let the trumpet sound and read out this sound trumpet a trumpet sounds herald reads if any man of quality or degree within the lists of the army will maintain upon edmund supposed earl of gloucester that he is a manifold traitor let him appear by the third sound of the trumpet he is bold in his defence sound first trumpet again second trumpet again third trumpet trumpet answers within enter edgar armed preceded by a trumpet ask him his purposes why he appears upon this call of the trumpet what are you your name your quality and why you answer this present summons no my name is lost by treason's tooth bear none and canker bit yet am i noble as the adversary i come to cope which is that adversary what's he that speaks for edmund earl of gloucester himself what sayst thou to him draw thy sword that if my speech offend the noble heart thy arm may do thee justice here is mine behold it is the privilege of mine honours my oath and my profession i protest maugre thy strength youth place and eminence 
despite thy victor sword and fire new fortune thy valour and thy heart thou art a traitor false to thy gods thy brother and thy father conspirant against this high illustrious prince and from the extremest upward of thy head to the descent and dust beneath thy foot a most toad-spotted traitor say thou no this sword this arm and my best spirits are bent to prove upon thy heart whereto i speak thou liest in wisdom i should ask thy name but since thy outside looks so fair and warlike and that thy tongue some say of breeding breathes what safe and nicely i might well delay by rule of knighthood i disdain and spurn back do i toss those treasons to thy head with the hell hated lie o'erwhelm thy heart which for they yet glance by and scarcely bruise this sword of mine shall give them instant way where they shall rest for ever trumpets speak alarms they fight edmund falls save him save him this is mere practice gloucester by the law of arms thou wast not bound to answer an unknown opposite thou art not vanquished but cozened and beguiled shut your mouth dame or with this paper shall i stop it hold sir thou worse than any name read out thine evil no tearing lady i perceive you know it gives the letter to edmund see if i do the laws are mine not thine who can arraign me for it exit most monstrous o oh. knowest thou this paper ask me not what i know albany to an officer who goes out go after her she's desperate govern her what you have charged me with that have i done and more <laughs> much more the time will bring it out tis past and so am i but what art thou that hast this fortune on me if thou art noble i do forgive thee let's exchange charity i am no less in blood than thou art edmund if more the more thou hast wronged me my name is edgar and thy father's son the gods are just and of our pleasant vices make instruments to plague us the dark and vicious place where thee he got cost him his eyes thou hast spoken right tis true the wheel is come full circle i am here methought thy very gate did prophesy a royal nobleness i must embrace thee let sorrow split my heart if ever i did hate thee or thy father worthy prince i know it where have you hid yourself how have you known the miseries of your father by nursing them my lord list the brief tale and when tis told oh that my heart would burst the bloody proclamation to escape that followed me so near oh our life's sweetness that with the pain of death we'd hourly die rather than die at once taught me to shift into a madman's rags to assume a semblance that very dogs disdained and in this habit met i my father with his bleeding rings their precious stones new lost became his guide led him begged for him saved him from despair never o oh, fault revealed myself unto him until some half hour passed when i was armed not sure though hoping of this good success i asked his blessing and from first to last told him my pilgrimage but his flawed heart alack too weak the conflict to support twixt two extremes of passion joy and grief burst smilingly this speech of yours hath moved me and shall perchance do good but 
speak you on. You look as you had something more to say. If there be more, more woeful, hold it in, for I am almost ready to dissolve hearing of this. This would have seemed a period to such as love not sorrow, but another, to amplify too much, would make much more and top extremity. Whilst I was big in clamour, came there a man who, having seen me in my worst estate, shunned my abhorred society. But then, finding who it was that so endured, with his strong arms he fastened on my neck, and bellowed out as he'd burst heaven, threw him on my father, told the most piteous tale of Lear and him that ever ear received, which in recounting his grief grew prisoned, and the strings of life began to crack. Twice then the trumpet sounded, and there I left him, tranced. But who was this? Kent, sir, the banished Kent, who in disguise followed his enemy king and did him service improper for a slave. Enter a gentleman hastily with a bloody knife. Help! Help! Oh, help! What kind of help? Speak, man. What means this bloody knife? It is hot. It smokes. It came even from the heart of... Oh, she's dead. Who did? Speak, man. Your lady, sir, your lady. And her sister by her is poisoned. She hath confesses it. I was contracted to them both. All three now marry in an instant. Here comes Kent. Enter Kent. Produce their bodies, be they alive or dead. This judgment of the heavens that makes us tremble touches us not with pity. Oh, is this he? The time will not allow the compliment which very manners urges. I am come to bid my king and master I good night. Is he not here? Great thing of us forgot. Speak, Edmund, where's the king, and where's Cordelia? The bodies of Goneril and Regan are brought in. Seest thou this object, Kent? Alack, why thus? Yet Edmund was beloved. The one, the other, poison for my sake, and after slew herself. Even so, cover their faces. <sighs> I pant for life. Some good I mean to do, despite of mine own nature. Quickly, send, be brief in it, to the castle, for my writ is on the life of Lear and on Cordelia. Nay, send in time. Run, run, oh, run! To who, my lord? Who has the office? Send thy token of reprieve. Well thought on. Take my sword. Give it the captain. Hasty for thy life. Exit Edgar. He hath commission from thy wife and me to hang Cordelia in the prison. And to lay the blame upon her own despair that she forbid herself the gods defend her bear him hence a while edmund is borne off enter lear with cordelia dead in his arms edgar officer and others following oh 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 you are men of stone had i your tongues and eyes i'd use them so that heaven's vault should crack She's gone for ever. I know when one is dead and when one lives. She's dead as earth. Lend me a looking glass, if that her breath will mist or stain the stone. Why then she lives. Is this the promised end? Or image of that horror? Fall and cease. 
this feather stirs she lives if it be so it is a chance which does redeem all sorrows that ever i have felt oh my good master kneeling prithee away tis noble kent your friend a plague upon you murderous traitors all i might have saved her now she's gone for ever cordelia cordelia stay a little ha huh? what is't thou sayest her voice was ever soft gentle and low an excellent thing in woman i killed the slave that was a-hanging thee tis true my lords he did did i not fellow i have seen the day with my good biting falchion i would have made them skip i am old now and these same crosses spoil me who are you mine eyes are not the best i'll tell you straight if fortune brag of two she loved and hated one of them we behold this is a dull sight are you not kent the same your servant kent where is your servant caius he is a good fellow i can tell you that he'll strike and quickly too he's dead and rotten no my good lord i am the very man i'll see that straight that from your first difference and decay have followed your sad steps you are welcome hither nor no man else all's cheerless dark and deadly your eldest daughters have fordone themselves and desperately are dead ay so i think he knows not what he says in vain is it that we present us to him very bootless enter an officer edmund is dead my lord that's but a trifle here you lords and noble friends know our intent what comfort to this great decay may come shall be applied for us we will resign during the life of this old majesty to him our absolute power to edgar and kent you to your rights with boot and such addition as your honours have more than merited all friends shall taste the wages of their virtue and all foes the cup of their deservings oh see see and my poor fool is hanged no 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 life why should a dog a horse a rat have life and thou no breath at all thou come no more never 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 pray you undo this button thank you sir do you see this look on her look her lips look there look there he dies he faints my lord my lord break heart i prithee break look up my lord vex not his ghost oh let him pass he hates him that would upon the rack of this rough world stretch him out longer he is gone indeed the wonder is he hath endured so long he but usurped his life bear them from hence our present business is general woe to edgar and kent friends of my soul you twain rule in this realm and the gored state sustain i have a journey sir shortly to go my master calls me i must not say no the weight of this sad time we must obey speak what we feel not what we ought to say the oldest hath borne most we that are young shall never see so much nor live so long exeunt with a dead march end of act five end of the tragedy of king lear by william shakespeare